Lincoln was Henry Leland's second luxury car line. In 1917, the autocratic Leland left his first car company, Cadillac, to build airplane engines for the Allies in World War I. Leland formed the Lincoln Motor Company and began to build Liberty aircraft motors. His ability to build these complex engines in large numbers enhanced Leland's reputation as a quality manufacturer. After the war, Leland again turned his attention to building cars. By 1920, he was ready to introduce the first Lincoln automobile. With a V8 engine, Leland had made Cadillac a respected car in 1914. His new car sported a motor that went beyond what he had done for Cadillac. The Lincoln V8 was built with a 60 degree angle versus the Cadillac's 90. This design smoothed out the uneven cylinder firings and calmed engine vibrations. The result was a smoother and quieter engine. Its massive 358 cubic inches made it one of the fastest power plants on the road. The Lincoln's Model L engine quickly gained favor with both cops and robbers. But their endorsement wasn't enough to lure a well-heeled clientele to Lincoln. They were put off by the unimaginative and dowdy styling. Slow sales combined with a business downturn in 1920 and a wartime tax claim against the company finished Leland. In 1922, Henry Ford, prompted by his son Edsel, bought Lincoln at a foreclosure sale. Henry Ford was not very interested in owning a luxury car maker. His money was still being made on low-cost cars, but his son was altogether different. Edsel was a gentleman and he threw himself into the challenge of transforming the moribund Lincoln. He recognized that the Lincoln was superbly built, but he knew that its styling was way off the mark. Edsel hired expert coach builders to transform this stiff dowager. He imposed standards of quality that exceeded the coach builder's own. He made sure that only the finest materials were used. Even though the Lelands were gone, their ideal of building cars that never wore out remained. The public agreed with Edsel's formula, and Lincoln's began to sell. His refinements appealed to doctors, lawyers, academics, and others who insisted upon excellence but wanted to avoid flashiness. More than 8,000 Lincolns were annually being sold by the late 1920s. But Ford Motor Company's sloppy cost control methods made it impossible to tell if the car's $4,500 price tag was making the company any money. The huge cost of obtaining the finest materials, the hours spent finishing the bodies and testing and refining each Lincoln chassis, probably exceeded any profits. However, Edsel wasn't worried. He felt Lincoln's role was not to make money for the parent company, but to enhance Ford's reputation by being a leader among American luxury cars. Attempting to gain this reputation, Edsel had pushed his designers to their limits. But he knew their efforts fell short. He vowed in 1925 to find the finest designers and take them into the Lincoln fold. With persistent wooing, Edsel lured Raymond Dietrich to Detroit to design bodies for Lincoln. This talent raid allowed Edsel to offer the most renowned custom body designer styling skills on Lincolns as they came straight from the factory. Soon, Edsel began to sell Lincolns with an array of pre-designed bodies, or catalog bodies, created by several of the nation's master body designers. This was a step toward the mass marketing of luxury and a signal that the custom-bodied world would have to change. In 